My name is Stan Brown. I'm an ordained Methodist minister working at Kingston University as full time chaplain. Hello, my name is Rabbi Michael Rosenfeld, I'm a rabbi of Kingston Surbiton District Synagogue uh, here in Kingston upon Thames. Um, I'm an Orthodox rabbi coming from America and spent a lot of time in Israel as well. And I'm also the chaplain, Jewish chaplain here at Kingston University. My name is Rashid Leher. I'm a retired army officer, um, a chaplain, volunteer chaplain at the university and the hospital, and I do anything for free tea, and I'm still waiting. <laughs> My name is Muhammad Anwar. I'm the imam of Kingston. Well, I, I, friends, I, I, was, I, I was quite surprised when you were asked us to talk about exorcism, because it's not something that I think about very much at all. Uh, in fact, kind of, kind of my starting point, it's actually fairly marginal in the kind of Christianity that, that I represent. But there would be other places in the world, if you talk to, say, a Christian from Africa, you would probably get a very different opinion about that. It would probably be something that was much more on the agenda, something that was much more in, in the air and part of, part of the culture. Now, I have no idea how that compares to you from your traditions. Mm. I would say also, from my perspective, it was pretty much there was the same thing. Um, I haven't experienced any exorcism or um, been part of, uh, that, that, that hasn't been part of my, my process. Certainly wasn't in my training, that I will say, and um, I've never witnessed it or um, experienced such a thing. Um, I think in, more in the Middle Ages and more in Eastern Europe for Jews, it was more common. There was something called a Dibuk, which was a, uh, there's actually a Yiddish play that was made, it was uh, titled around this, and it was uh, the opening of, which film was it? Cohen Brothers, uh, a serious man, I think it was, opened up with the Yiddish uh, statement with uh, the first 10 minutes of it, we're dealing with a, uh, some, this concept of a, a debut that somebody was possessed with a, uh, with, with uh, some kind of a spirit, but uh, it's certainly not something which I, I relate to um, uh, frequently. Well, um, as a layman, and I'm, I'm not a priest or anything like that, and reading what I have, um, I think the level of understanding in relation to exorcism and people today and yesterday, really, you have to start with the kind of people you're talking about. I, I believe that in rural populations, especially in developing countries, it is very much part of everyday life. People it's ascribed to good omen, bad omen, and if somebody is particularly bad, perhaps the person is possessed. In, in Europe, in the West, in the last couple of years, we have seen children, we've seen victims, of uh, uh, so-called exorcisms in churches, etc., as well as stories constantly featuring about certain parts of Africa where Islam is quite broadly spread. And these guys can be Muslim, Christian, or whatever faith they are, but this, this feeling of being possessed is part of a cultural thing linked to good and bad. How the West has reacted to it is challenging because it is something that the uh, Mental Health Trust is trying to address, the police are trying to educate themselves as to what is legal, what is not legal, and perhaps bring into the faith communities, black churches or whatever, so black meaning African churches, that there is a borderline that you do not cross as far as the UK is concerned, whilst they may get away with it there. So a uh, uh, human uh, perspective is that it is an issue, especially in developing countries, and I personally, because I've been here since 60 and Mufti is quite new, am aware of it as an issue in my relatives up in North Yorkshire, Lancashire, where the settlements as immigration is concerned was 60s, 70s, and it is very much um, an issue where people consult with our scholars in, in trying to remedy some things because being possessed can cause illness or bad things. It was my layman's view of this. As far as faith is concerned, if you could, um, I think jinn and being possessed. We jinns are the in the Abrahamic faith. There is a, a being outside the human being called the jinn, and I think Mufti will agree they are good and bad. Yes. Park and Napa. Park yes. is. A, state of cleanliness <coughs> in Napa. 
both sides, like human being, same as human being. Some human beings they are like very good, and some human beings they are bad. So the same, some they are very good, they help, and other they don't help, and even they cause uh, like something illness or uh, something is like very unusual. There's many houses we can in UK we can find. Even some people they, because they don't believe and. <coughs> And uh, they think some other thing, but people who they believe their uh, reality is like mm, they are both sides. Sometimes they help you, and sometimes they cause you like trouble. Like, some illness. Fascinating. In, in the Talmud, uh, which is a literary book, a textual work of, that goes back to about the year uh, five six hundred, um, <coughs> there's uh, a lot of discussion of a. Uh, something in Hebrew called a shade, which is uh, almost like a, an idea of a, a demon or some kind of a, uh, um, a force, external force, not something that's human or it's something you can't see, it's invisible, but it's something which is very much there. It's not something which comes into my own personal life uh, or into Jewish life in contemporary Britain, uh, I think, very much at all. It's not something that people relate to, but it's something that's in the, in the uh, religiously something that certainly there, it's part of the, uh, it's part of our, our, our text. It's, it's fascinating that you're, you're saying it. There's also a idea of ministering angels uh, that would be, uh, is a positive force um, for, for the uh, for the good. These are beings or entities that do the will of God. Uh, but uh, again, it's not something that's. It's a more of a um, theological or intellectual, but not so much as being. Possessed. There's only one situation I've, I've ever, any person I've spoken to in contemporary times, a colleague of mine that was, uh, was in South Africa and was working at the time and uh, saw a, a Kabbalist who was a Jewish mystic, mystic and he, uh, and the mystic said that he was possessed and that he had some kind of a, a debulk or some kind of a, uh, some type of a, he was possessed by something and sure enough when he went to get neurologically tested, uh, he had some serious neurological uh, issues, and he had treatment, um, and eventually he, he got better. But there's a there's a video of him where he was with the neurological uh, situation. The Kabbalist, the Jewish Kabbalist, the mystic, said that he was indeed possessed by something. But uh, the neurologists were all of the opinion that he had some kind of a very rare neurological problem. But uh, that's the only time I've ever heard of such a situation in, in my life or spoken to somebody that's. Uh, Encountered such a thing. You haven't yeah. seen the film *The Exorcist*. Uh, it wasn't something I've seen. No. Oh, I should have seen. I should have seen it before I come. Kind in. of part of the problem, isn't it, that people um, who are not part of gay communities may get ideas about this from mm -hmm. entertainment horror yeah. like that, which is what what it is. It's a form of entertainment. Um, th there is, as often I said, there's a long tradition of exorcism in Christianity. If you read the Christian scriptures, the New Testament, there are many, many stories of Jesus as an exorcist. But the, the thing that seems to be important about that by most Christians nowadays is that this is a, a, a sign at that particular time of, of who Jesus is and what he has come to do. That where there is evil, in, in, as it is perceived and as it's recognized in that, that time and that place, um, firstly, Jesus is able to recognize the evil and name it. Secondly, the evil itself responds. It recognizes the authority that Jesus comes comes with, and he's seen in these stories to have authority over over evil, to be able to confront and, and, and reject evil. Now, they said there are many stories like this about Jesus. But Western Christians would, would, would tend to look at these now and say, in some cases, we might well talk about that person uh, as having a mental health problem today. Uh, and I don't think two things are mutually exclusive. I think you can have both descriptions of the person. I don't think we have to exclude them. But that we also would look at this and say, this is telling us something about who we are to be as followers of Jesus when we find ourselves.